Okay. Oh, I got something hanging over here. So, um, take out your take out your note sheets from yesterday. Yours will be filled in, obviously. Chapter six, section one, um, and you, you had the first video notes on there. And what I want you to do is, I want you to flip it over, okay? And I want you to for this exercise on the back side. Hopefully, it's blank. If not, you can take out a blank sheet of paper. And I want you to make a a T chart, okay? I don't know if you can see that. A T chart on the back and on the left hand side. Put Hamilton. On the right hand side, put Jefferson. Okay? And if you remember yesterday, we have right here the Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton, and the Secretary of State, Thomas Jefferson. And we really focused on Hamilton for the last couple days, and we're now we're going to look at the two of them side by side. Um, through them, we're going to see the, uh, the emergence of political philosophy in early American government, and those philosophies are really going to stay with us through most of the class. So our, our objective. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our goal for today is to compare and contrast the political philosophies of Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton, and we're really going to focus on the struggle between states' rights and the strength of the central government. So the things that we're going to go through should lend itself really easily to you taking notes on, you know, what Hamilton believed, what Jefferson believed, and what you could even do is, you know, kind of on the left-hand side, maybe leave a little space for categories because there'll be a category, and then what Hamilton thought, what Jefferson thought and that'll keep your notes nice and organized. So if we look at just some of the things that we've already thought about, <clears throat> you know, what, what made George Washington a great president? You know, he, he has great charisma, he has great prestige, he's, you know, he's the most famous man in America, he's the most idealized man in America at the time, and he has the realization of his own limits, which is what we're gonna focus in on, and that's where this precedent of creating the cabinet comes in. What we want to focus on is this cabinet, and specifically those two guys, right, Hamilton and Jefferson, in his cabinet. Um, knowledgeable advisors, you know, they have specific delegated authority, but when Jefferson and Hamilton get together in the cabinet room to advise Washington, what, we, what, what they learn very early is they have very different views on government, on the Constitution, and they're giving advice to George Washington based on their own convictions and based on what they believe. And so if we take a look at now, go to the T-chart, and the first category, so this is going to be the same everywhere. How different were they? And so if we look at the first category, right, the source, the source of governmental power. Where does the government get its power? On the left, we have Hamilton. Hamilton believed that the government needed to protect the elite and that the power should be in the hands of the elite. Um, what <clears throat> this could be called, or what we sometimes call this, is an oligarchy, O-L-I-G-A-R-C-H-Y, an oligarchy, where the people who have the most to lose should have the most say and the most vested in the government. Jefferson on the right, you know, he believed more in the common man and that the, the power of government comes from the people, you know, you know, think of the Declaration of Independence, you know, the, the people are where the real power of government is located, and the, the power of government should only be used to protect the people, nothing else. Government is meant to protect the people. So this is the source of power. They also differed on the vision that they had for the United States, and I know that you're working through um, a Hamiltonian vision in our Discover, uh, Discover Alexander Hamilton um, activity that you're working on probably in the beginning of class tomorrow finishing up um, but what they saw the future of the United States Alexander Hamilton believed that the United States had had the potential to be a mercantile power to be one of those leading global economies he envisioned an industrial future a sprawling economy that is connected by by, by um, a market you know we are our own market manufacturing we're making stuff we're selling stuff to ourselves and eventually maybe even selling stuff to the world uh, Jefferson, on the other hand, believed in what, in what he called the agrarian ideal. He envisioned an America of farmers, you know, small landowners who, <clears throat> who um, worked the earth. And that, that's, that's the basis of the American economy. Um, he believed that farming was the, you know, the noblest profession, and he thought that that was in the true spirit of what the American Revolution was, to give everybody this opportunity to own their little piece of land, to have their own little... Um, piece of the world where they were the most important and powerful entity. So we're talking about local authority to you know, the, the most local that you can get. 
my land, my rules. Their view on the federal system, and I'm just going to move these circles around a little bit. <clears throat> so this is federalism, right, where we have a central or federal government and we have a state government. And, you know, we could say that the central government has its powers, state government has its powers, and there are some that would overlap, like, for example, the power to tax. If we're looking at Hamilton, now I, you want to take some notes on this, okay? I know I don't have it specifically spelled out, but listen and maybe take some notes on this. If we're looking at Hamilton, you know, Hamilton would say that this should look a little bit more like this, where the, you know, the central government is the powerful entity, the state governments are there, and there's some overlapping power, but really the power is in the central government. And he believes in a very strong central government. Well, Jefferson, right, he's going to disagree wholeheartedly with that because he thinks that this should be a weak entity and that the states should have the most power and maybe some other stuff would overlap but really the central government was there just you know he probably even think that would be even smaller you know the central government should be limited the real power should be in the state governments and now think about the articles of confederation jefferson liked them you know the power is in the state governments that's local control so if we think about hamilton hamilton thinks there needs to be a little bit more of a, of an idea idea of distant authority within the american system and jefferson believes wholeheartedly in local control. Get this back to where we started. <clears throat> so how different were they in their view on power in the federal system? So this should just summarize what I just went over. Hamilton believed that the central government needed to have them have more power than the individual states in most areas of governing. So the central government supersedes the state government in most areas. Jefferson, on the other hand, believed that the central government was there to do only what was necessary. The real power should be in the states. And his, his logic was similar to what we talked about with England and the colonies. You know your local issues. You know your local concerns. You know your, lo your local problems. That's where they should be most dealt with. Easily, it would most easily be dealt with. This distant authority, you know, you've got some congressman from Massachusetts. How does he know what Virginia or Georgia needs? And why should that government be the prominent one? And so this leads directly to the way that they look at the Constitution. When they view the Constitution, they, they see it very differently. They, they see a, a usefulness of the Constitution and how the Constitution would be put in practice in very different ways. So Hamilton, and this, there's a term here that I want you to really understand for, for both of them. Hamilton believed that the Constitution should be loosely interpreted, called loose construction. Loose interpretation of the Constitution. That is, the Constitution was meant to be applied where and when needed. So it's more of a guide. It, it suggests things, but it's not limited. You can do more with the Constitution than is specifically written in it. Whereas Jefferson believed that the Constitution needed to be strictly interpreted, strict construction. And his, his philosophy is this. If it's not written in the Constitution, then technically it cannot be done. And this is, you know, polar opposites. Hamilton believes that the Constitution needs to change as we're going through, not necessarily with amendments, but just our interpretation of the Constitution needs to change as we come up with new issues. Jefferson believes it does not change. It is a, an agreement between the states and everything that's in there. If it, you look at it like a contract, everything that's in there is specifically what you can and cannot do. They each had <clears throat> um, interesting quotes on power and that you can find you know, dozens of these quotes, and you've been looking at some for Hamilton, but, you know, for, for Hamilton, he would say, constitutions should consist of general provisions, only general provisions. The reason is that they must necessarily, they must necessarily be permanent, and that they cannot calculate for the possible change of things. So, what he's saying is, we are write this constitution now, things might change later, so we might have to change things and the way that we use the constitution later. Jefferson said, when an instrument admits two constructions, one safe, the other dangerous, one precise, the other indefinite, I prefer that which is safe and precise. I had rather ask an enlargement of power from the nation where it is found necessary than to assume it by a construction which would make our powers boundless. And we're going to spend a lot of time in class on Thursday afternoon looking at that one. Now, 
how, how can they have the same, how can they have these different interpretations of the same document? This we've talked about in class, and I'm just going to refer to it again. So their constitu constitutional justification. Remember the elastic clause that we looked at. To make all laws which shall be necessary and proper, right? And Jefferson, the power is not delegated, so that Tenth Amendment. And we'll revisit those again. And so what I, what I wanted you to get out of this presentation was just to come away with a T-chart that compares and contrasts and the major issues, right, the major issues of the day, the major... Um, political ph philosophical issues what Hamilton believed and what Jefferson believed and we'll use that for our activity moving into Thursday and Friday um, I am going to put a Google Doc underneath Hamilton one it'll be called Hamilton and Jefferson okay go there and fill out that form and listen this is how I'm checking to make sure that you're watching the videos I'm gonna throw you some points for these but you need to be doing your homework okay See you in class tomorrow. <clears throat>